Hi YouTubers, welcome to Amazing Gadgets. Today I will be talking about depth of field in photography. Now before I get started today, I would like to say this is one of my first photography tips and lesson videos and I do plan on making more in the future. So if you enjoy photography, please help me out by clicking the link the like button below and the subscribe button on the top. So now let's get started. So what is depth of field? So right here I have the Canon EOS 7D mounted on a tripod with a 16 to 35L lens. So in order to describe depth of field to you, I want you to imagine this will take us into some geometry. Imagine there are planes parallel to the lens, like one plane here, a plane here, and a plane here. And not all the planes in the in parallel to the lens. Just imagine planes. So, as you might have heard of people talking about wide depth of field and narrow or shallow depth of field. By wide depth of field, they mean more of these planes are in focus. And by shallow depth of field, they mean less of the planes are in focus. To help you understand this, right here I have a photo of Lake Tahoe. As you can see, the foreground and the background is all in focus. Everything is in focus. This is what we call a wide depth of field because everything is in focus, including the foreground, foreground, background, everything in between. Now I have a photo of the squirrel right here. As you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's some of this foreground, which is a tree root. And the background is also blurred. The only thing in the photo in focus is the squirrel itself. This is what we call a narrow depth of field meaning a small amount of the well the field is in focus, the foreground and the background is blurred. Now that you understand what the depth of field is, you are asking me how do you control depth of field, right? Now there are two factors that comes into play when we're talking about depth of field. One is the aperture your lens is set on and the other is the distance from your subject. So first of all, let's talk about aperture. Aperture is measured in f-stops. The lower the f-stop number, the wider the aperture. The higher the f-stop number, the narrower the aperture. Now right here I have a photo of the Golden Gate Bridge. This was shot with a f-stop of 10, meaning I had, this is actually a medium aperture number. As you can see, everything in the view is in focus. And now we have the Northern Mockingbird photo right here, which was shot with an f-stop of 5.6. This is what gives you a narrow depth of field. As you can see, the background is blurred. There wasn't many foreground in this photo, but the background is blurred, and the only subject in focus is the bird in this photo. To sum up what I just said, a wider aperture, the smaller the f-stop number, means a narrower depth of field with more of your picture blurred out, the background and the foreground blurred out. Now a narrower aperture or a higher f-stop number will lead to everything or most of everything in your photo in focus, so a wider depth of field. Now let's move on to how to control the depth of field in your camera. Now, controlling the depth of field in your camera, there will be two factors that will affect the depth of field. One is the aperture your camera is set on, and the other is your distance from the subject that you're trying to focus on. Now let me talk about aperture, adjusting the aperture. Now on most DSLRs, you'll see a mode switch dial over here. And the only two modes that you can adjust your aperture on is in AV mode, which stands for Aperture Priority, or M mode, which stands for Manual. These are the only two modes that you can adjust your aperture in. Some cameras, like the Canon cameras, may have a bulb mode. In that mode, you can also adjust your aperture. So anyways, um, to adjust your aperture, turn on your camera. Put it in one of the modes, 
and you can see the LCD right here and there's a, actually a wheel over here that you can use to adjust the aperture. You can make the aperture narrower or wider. The widest aperture your lens will go to is usually displayed on the ring of the lens. For this one, the widest it will go is an f-stop of 2.8. Now remember, wider the aperture, the lower the f-stop number, the narrower the depth of field, and the higher the f-stop number, this lens can go up to f-22, the narrower the aperture, the wider the depth of field. So now let's talk about distance. When I talk about distance, I mean both your physical, now let's pretend this water bottle is the subject you're trying to take a photo of and here's your camera. Now this right here would be the physical distance from the object. And since L models don't actually move on the outside when you zoom, anyways this is zoom ring. Now the other distance I talk about is a zoom. Now remember as you zoom into your subject you're actually getting closer to your subject and as you zoom out of the subject you're actually farther from the subject. I mean not physically farther but the zoom is farther from the subject. So in other words a 16 millimeter will be farther and wider than a 300 millimeter. So how does distance play in this? So this is very easy to understand. The closer you are to the subject, the narrower the depth of field. The farther you are from the subject, the wider the depth of field. So that means the farther away you are from the subject, more of the photo will be in focus. And the closer you are to the subject, the less of the photo that will be in focus. Now I'm not saying if you're trying to take a photo of someone, you should back out really far away. But you should back off just a little bit so if you want the background in focus you could get everything in focus. And if you want the background out of focus you should try to get closer to the person. I hope this video has helped you understand more about depth of field in photography. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And before I end this video I would like to take this time to talk about my photography blog. Now the photography blog I run is a blog where I post pro photography related product reviews where I provide some photography tips and mainly I display a large collection of beautiful photos I've taken so if you enjoy photography please go check it out the link is in the video description below and always Go out and explore, take some beautiful photos, and if you have something nice to show me, um, email me on YouTube, leave me a comment, and also if you have questions or comments about the video, make sure you drop me a comment below or email me on YouTube, whichever one you prefer. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.